This is the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're back talking about Miss Marvel, Episode 1, Generation Y. I'm going to give you a task. I want you to go home. Not right now, but after school. Then you're going to look yourself in the mirror. And you're going to ask yourself, Kamala, who is that girl I see? Staring straight back at me. You're sitting lyrics from Milan. I am. Yeah, I am. You are. Welcome back, fellow Defenders, to Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. We are talking about Miss Marvel, the first episode of the new series from Marvel on Disney+. Plus. Uh, this episode is called Generation Y. And I'm not alone this time, but I, my usual co-hosts, Chris and John, are both traveling at the moment. They're both over in the US at the moment. And a former co-host has decided to step into their seat. Welcome back, Irene. Hey guys! It's great to have you back aboard. <laughs> <You're joking. laughs> Thanks very much for asking me to come back, Derek. I'm delighted to have have you back. We also have Lucas with us. Welcome, Lucas. Hello. Excellent. Joining TV Podcast Industries for the first time to talk about uh, Miss Marvel. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of an interesting one. This this is uh, another different show from um, from Marvel on uh, on Disney Plus. What did you guys think overall of the episode? When it started, I was thinking, is this like for a younger audience, maybe? Mm-hmm. But I think it's just because it is it's brighter and it's fun and the illustrations on the screen and everything, you know, just her yeah. imagination me- makes it seem like kind of high school. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. in a good way. Yeah. Not in a dark way. How about yourself, Lucas? What do you think uh, of this as, a, as an opener? It matched what Irene said, but the way they, they present the, the character, it's a match the age of the, the girl as well, Kamala. Because, like, on the other movies, Avengers, they're, like, adults, 38, 40, 40 something, I don't know. And they mm-hmm. inf- confronting, like, things from the space, aliens, all kind of things. So it's kind of a, everything is leveling up with the characters. Yeah. So she starts on a young, a young age. So it's literally, like, friends, family, mm-hmm. everything is going on. Like, they're forming, like, light thread way. They're not going too deep or not going too dark on the way. Like, yeah. And a nice kickoff moment for the episode. It's interesting to think of when you, when you think about the Avengers movies and that kind of stuff that have been going on for, what, 12 years now, 14 years now? Yeah. Um, and Kamala Khan herself is 16. So she has totally grown up in a world where the Avengers existed. So that's all having that impression on her. I kind of love that setup of her being yeah, nearly as long as she's been around, girl. we've been around. Like, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But they did try to set up uh, the event of the Avengers, like the first movie only. Um, so that's beyond, before all the rest of the, the battle, like the main battle. Yeah, I think I was I was having a look at that because that's exactly what I thought when that, that, that as the episode opened. We're going, going into a little bit of spoilers now, but we'll go into full spoilers in a second. But that opening of the episode, the only reason I realized it was the big one in Infinity War was because you had some characters from Black Panther in there and you had Captain Marvel who only came in around Infinity War. So it does look like that's the big battle in New York, but this is the later battle, the one at the end of, of Infinity War, which is only, I think, about two years ago from uh, from this point in, in the show. So, uh, so really recent. Um, some some really interesting stuff, and I love I love how she plays with that. But we'll definitely get into, into that uh, as we go into the episode, fellow defenders. If you haven't followed us, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, make sure you do so. Just pop on over to tvpodcastindustries.com. Uh, currently, got lots of podcasts going on. We're covering the boys as a big change of speed uh, for anybody who's uh, who likes comics but likes them more violent and even more adult uh, than you can <laughs> possibly imagine. Uh, covering that over there. So uh, we also want to hear your thoughts. You can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop over to our our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV podcast industries. Uh, leave your thoughts on the spoiler posts over there as well. Do you know why I did that? So people will subscribe and contact you. That too, but also because I wanted to make a break before we go into real spoilers about the episode in case people okay. haven't watched it. <laughs> That's what I when you said straight away about the spoilers. All good. Let's get into our discussion about the first episode of Ms. Marvel. So, want to kick us off with the details behind the episode. Uh, the executive producers for this show are Kevin Foggy, Louis Desposito, Victoria Alonso, Bisha K. Ali, Adil Alarbi, Bilal Fala. Producer and Miss Marvel co-creator Sana Amanat is on board as well. Uh, head writer for the show is Bisha K. Ali. She's a British-Pakistani stand-up comedian and screenwriter. She wrote on the TV show Sex Education for Netflix, and we talked about her before uh, for her episode of Loki as well. 
So, uh, so she's got lots of involvement and, and given the reins of this character, this uh, Miss Marvel, she's really funny as well. Check her out. She's uh, been doing lots of podcast, uh, podcast, podcast stuff and interviews and uh, she's really funny. Go check her out. And the episode was directed by Adil Alarbi and Bilal Fala. Um, they are a duo who've been directing lots and lots of stuff. They wrote, they directed the first two episodes of the excellent TV show Snowfall. I know John is a massive fan of that. Uh, go check out the show Snowfall. Uh, really, really good. Uh, most recently, they directed Bad Boys for Life as well. So we massive, won't hold that against them. A massive movie, though. <laughs> <laughs> and they've directed the first episode and final episode of this season. The episode was written by showrunner uh, Bisha K. Ali as well. Derry, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis of the episode? Sure. In Jersey City, after a less than successful driving test, Captain Marvel-obsessed teenager Kamala Khan is stuck without a ride of her own. She and her friend Bruno have been working on Kamala's cosplay for the first ever Avenger Con for months, but when her parents won't let her go to the event, they have to get creative. Sneaking out of her house after dark, Kamala takes her nanny's bangle to add to her Captain Marvel cosplay. She hopes the bracelet will add some much-needed flair. After enjoying everything AvengerCon has to offer, Kamala slips on her costume and joins the cosplay competition. But when she adds the bracelet, it activates, giving her what she's always wanted, superpowers. Following the eventful night, Kamala attempts to sneak back home, only to be met by her disappointed mother. Maniba challenges Kamala to think about herself, to be the good girl they brought her up to be, and get her head out of the cosmos but Kamala can only think about her, fa- her newfound powers. Meanwhile, across town, government agency Dabbage Control are watching the scene from Avengers Con and want to have a chat with this new super-powered teenager. There you go. That's the synopsis of the episode. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I was like, it was, very, it was set up and <clears throat> introduced and her, her friends, her family. Mm-hmm. Still, I was surprised, actually, that I know Avengers Con, it kind of seemed to move quite quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Uh, there was lot, lots going on, lots, lots, of, lots of stuff in the background there. I, I think I described this episode as absolutely jam-packed, full of Easter eggs and references uh, that you'd get if you were a big fan of all the movies. But I think it passes by enough that you don't have to have watched everything either. Well, I haven't, and I thought it did. So. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Let's get into our big moments from the episode. We're going to call these our marvellous moments, uh, obviously, given that it's Miss Marvel, right? <laughs> Marvelous moment number one. Yes, marvelous mo- moment <laughs> number one. Let's talk about uh, the style of the episode. What did you guys think of this? There's, there's, you, you mentioned it already a little bit about the um, the kind of graffiti artwork and everything that's going on that's coming out of uh, of Kamala's uh, mind a lot of the time, and lots of things going on in, in different scenes. What did you guys think of the of the way this was presented on the show? I thought it was, you know, when when her and Bruno were cycling along, and the you could see between it looked like sometimes it looked like chalk drawings on the buildings, mm-hmm. Black Panther, and then. As she went around the corner, it kind of looked more like a mural. Yes. But it was, it was really nice. Like, and when she was looking out the window in the car, even after the disastrous driving test, which mm. is just like complete face palm moment. Like, yeah. but I feel like that's how my driving <laughs> test would probably be going as well. I can imagine mine would be the same. <laughs> <laughs> but she looked out the window and you just see Captain Marvel going off over the river. Like, you know, I don't know, just nice little touches. And it wasn't too much. You know, never got to the point where you were like, that's actually too much. They could have dialed that back a bit. Yeah, yeah. Thought it was thought it was pretty cool. What, what about yourself, Lucas? What did you think? I think they tried to bridge in between the the comic books, mm-hmm. but not be dragging too much into that. To be like, I don't know, like uh, trying to force the teenagers to read the comic books because this is the right. kind of thing they're not going to do it. Uh-huh. It's kind of it's it kind of a new like so so it's a way to add the comic book interpretation into the series. But not to be something like very for them to call like, oh, this is too old. Like, oh, look at this, look at that. Like, uh-huh. so they added the thing in the more digital art way. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. The mix of a drawings, mix of a animation, stop motion, graffiti, and everything. Like, so more design presentable. That's the thing is everything is too fa- uh, too fast. Like, yeah. nowadays. Like, yeah, I, I, I must say, I love this idea. It feels like it's really coming from this obsessive uh, teenager. Look, I have a podcast that we've been doing for six years about, uh, about Marvel TV shows and Marvel movies. I'm this obsessed with uh, with Marvel stuff. This is the kind of stuff that's going up, in my, up on in my head all the time. So I love seeing it just spill out into the real world or into the, uh, into their conversations and everything that's going on. I think it's a really good representation of this character. I think it's really cool. Um, this is very similar to comic book Kamal Khan. She is totally uh, obsessed with Marvel superheroes, knows everything about them, knows all their statistics. Um, you know, there's a, a little... 
a little side kind of comment for some of our Marvel fans out there. You might have noticed she's saying that she's listening to the Ant-Man podcast where he's interviewing loads of people. And that's where she learns all of the information that she knows about the Marvel Universe, because they don't have comic books in her universe. She's following podcasts to pick up all of these all this information. So I thought that was quite cool as well. Yeah, that's a good idea to add. Mm. We all love podcasts, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, even just, I know you're talking about kind of the drawings and that, but, um, you know, and she's going through the plan with Bruno. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and then I'm going to go down and we're going to get on the bus and we're going to go. And he was just, and her, she even had the timeline long and she's drawing uh-huh. the pictures. And then I like, I loved at the end where it was like, okay, reality. Uh-huh. You know, the, it didn't go in line with a, anything like what she was planning. Like. Absolutely, absolutely. I love, I love. Yeah, when he when he breaks the whole way down and goes. So what you're really saying is we need to catch the bus at this time. Yeah, That's we're going to get the bus. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> it is. Hilarious. Maybe she goes too far on, on her imagination, like and the way she thinks the world and the way she mix the Avengers world mm-hmm. with her world to 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 imagine everything. Like. Exactly, exactly. Like you can tell, this is totally her dream. This is exactly what she wants. She wants to be one of these superheroes. So, uh, so kind of cool that she uh, that she gets there towards the end. Uh, anything else about the imagination or the style of the episode that you guys wanted to pick up on? The the title catch me straight away. Mm-hmm. Generation Y. It made a, uh, raise a lot of questions. It's Y, the letter Y, because of Generation Z, mm-hmm. X, Y. And why? Because like they have no future. Because of the way the thing is going on, actually, the way the world is going there, there. Because the events that was before the Avengers, like when the mm-hmm. Thanos snapped the finger, everyone went out. Exactly. Everyone came back. I don't know if that happened in that world. Yeah, yeah. But could it be that they were no, they were lost in the way. Then everything goes back to normal. Then they kind of okay. Now we're back. Like we can go forward. Absolutely. So, you know, it was yeah. a joke about that. It was a joke about. The generation itself, like... Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that like, everybody's got to be questioning what's going on in the world after something like that happens, right? If, uh, if a, a big monster alien comes down from space and uh, makes half half the yeah. galaxy disappear, Randomly, yeah. uh, it must be really weird. You must be questioning everything that's going on. So, yeah, good call, good call. Excellent. Uh, will we move on to our next big, marvellous moment uh, for the episode? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like marvellous moments. This might change for the next episode. Sometimes uh, sometimes they change oh, after nice. the first episode. <laughs> But let's talk about the Khan family. And that kind of is everybody surrounding uh, uh, Kamala. Um, I think one of the things I love about how they've presented it on the show here is that everybody feels like family. Um, Even Bruno coming in and out uh, of this family group. I love how he's treated by the Khan family. There's that hilarious moment of Maniba passing off food. food to them and, yeah. and saying to them, that's my like, super like power. That. He's like, how did you even do that <laughs> that quickly? Like... Comes back with four full trays, including a spicy one uh, that he can pass on to his nana, you know? I yeah. uh, thought that was really funny. Uh, we don't learn uh, too much about about Bruno, but he is a major character. He's uh, the best friend. He's the person that's... Sidekick. The, he's the sidekick, exactly. Yeah. He's the, the guy in the chair, as they call him in the, in the Marvel Universe, the guy that does all of her technology for her as well. So uh, really good guy to have around. But do you guys think there was a little bit of chemistry there between the two of them? Yeah, yeah. I don't, on his side for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when they were on the roof, I thought he was going to maybe lean in and she kind of looked at him like, is he going to? Uh-huh. And then it just passed like, yeah. He's just kind of, you know, it, it, it's definitely the in what he says to her as well. He's like, you're Kamal Khan. If you want to save the world, you'll do that. And then it's like, oh God, I think I went a bit too far there with my best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, really, really like those little moments uh, again. Uh, Even the effort that. into the gloves, mm-hmm. like, which... So disappointed for him when they just got left out. I know, on the toilet floor as well. Not a great place to leave them. I presume uh, they're not going to work again if they ever found them. (laughs) And even like you said, obviously, they're not like, you know, what they're she's pretending they are but they did look so cool on her hands like so absolutely absolutely like i really like in these two characters this is, um the character uh is played by matt lintz um formerly seen on the walking dead uh with his head in a pike i uh, hope that doesn't spoil anything for anybody who's halfway through walking dead but um he was <laughs> he was a major character a character called henry uh over there and we haven't seen him in anything major since then but uh but kind of cool to see him in here he's a much much younger character and able to have a bit of fun uh in this world so Liking that. It was nice. I get the feeling that he doesn't need to knock or anything. He just, it's one of those friends that's like, he just walks in, he's one of them. Like, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I'm, he's very, very intelligent. He's just effectively made his own version of Alexa for the family. Yeah, he's genius. Like, he's a very <laughs> yeah. genius guy. Like, like yeah. so smart, so smart. He can figure out everything by himself. He can do everything himself, by himself. But the, the only thing I 
thought a bit weird. They don't show how. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like presented in a way he knows everything. He's very high tech. He knows how to do it. There's hand on deck to do everything. Yeah. But I, I thought they would present like, oh, I, I follow everything on YouTube. I learn of this guy. I learn of this. They right. present in a way how he's so smart. Ah, you have to leave something to the Yeah, because he, know, he knows programming. <laughs> he knows uh, electronics. He knows. Well, like, he's applying to Caltech. Gifted and immersion program. So. so he's just like someone that. Uh, Naturally gifted. gifted. Naturally gifted mm-hmm. the talent. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like it just makes sense to him. It's no big yeah. deal to him. Like, yeah. And I, th- I think there's a little bit of in the background. And again, first episode. So we may get more of it as we go along. But I think there's a yeah. little bit in the background where you see that he's, he lives above or lives in an electronic shop. So he's obviously taken sure, apart okay, and put yeah. loads of things back together over, over time. But anyway, even still, uh, put it together a voice, uh, a voice control unit that, uh, that cr- controls a smart home, um, for your friends. Uh, that's pretty impressive and allowing it to understand Urdu as well, like uh, doing a second yeah, language. Yeah, that was really cool. Well. You could say very it in impressive. Urdu or you could say it in English. Yeah, very yeah. impressive. Although the way he presented himself as well, uh, mm-hmm. even everything around him or them, even if it's not part of her imagination, mm-hmm. it has a bit of him. Or herself and that, like when he got inside of the Circle K. Yeah. So one of the O's become like a meme or become oh, yes. like an icon, something, and the chains in there. Like, so it's kind of like he's getting himself as well and between her imaginary world. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the whole text conversation between them about what's what's going on as the there's a, a road sign that starts it off and, and in yeah. her room, yeah. the stars change into what she's saying on the phone and then the smiley face is coming up or the really sad face coming up when she's been told that she can't. Yeah, she's go not there, there but it's yeah. presenting like him thinking kind of the same way. Mm. Yeah. That's it's really interesting. And that's really a really good touch. Uh, anything else about uh, about Bruno as a character to begin with? I'm 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 got I'm getting afraid. I got a bit afraid during the episode. He would be a very conven convenient sidekick. Mm-hmm. Like too he it was too fast the way they presented him, so smart, so this, so that so so multitask guy with a lot of things going on and doing everything by himself. Like so I think it was too early showing too much of him. Right. At once, I think it would be nicer to do a bit by bit more mm-hmm. about him, like in shows uh, more episodes show like how intelligent he is, how smart he is, how to know the technology and everything. No, he's like Albert with Batman. He just comes out with the gadgets. Like you don't say, "Where did you get that?" Like, how did... yeah, <laughs> kind of like. But this is, I think it was a bit too fast. Like if they could. Yeah, hold a bit backward. of that give us more background. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe we'll get, we'll get a bit more about him. Uh, he is a, a central character in the show, so I'm sure we'll see more of the character uh, definitely in the future. And there's a little nod to the fact that he's, he's lost his family or he doesn't have much family, so uh, potentially that's a bigger story as well. Him. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, like they do mention that he has his own his own nanny, so he's obviously living with his grandmother, so or some connection there. But it, it yeah. sounds like a lot of his family maybe may have been lost in one of the battles in the past or something like that. But uh, but yeah, I do like I do like his presence. I like I like seeing him around. Um, let's talk about the family themselves as well. Will we start with uh, start with um, her brother Amir, who's getting married. Um, what do you think of the relationship between uh, between the two siblings here? It's funny because when it started and he's just standing there praying mm-hmm. and she's saying like, well, it'd be different if it was you asking like, and yeah. you know, she's just kind of like the way you treat him is so different to the way you treat me. Yeah. But then when he came to her in her bedroom, like, and he was really sympathetic, mm-hmm. like, he's just like, no, it's no problem. Don't worry. I'll talk to them. Yeah. And, and, he, and he does find course, her corner as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, and, and whatever he said, maybe maybe she's right and it didn't take that much we didn't mm-hmm. see but like they listened like they heard him and they kind of came up with their compromise yeah yeah absolutely we'll talk it about wasn't that. a hard no anymore <laughs> like absolutely yeah and, and i think it's probably just how he explained it she seemed like she was trying to hide some information out of it she was trying to hide she was trying to say it was bruno that wanted to go she just wanted to tag along it's a conference and it sounds like he explained it as a convention to do with the Avengers. Everybody here knows the Avengers. So I don't think her parents were as put off about it. And then when they took out the scariness of her going off on her own, like yeah. the great thing about the Kamala Khan character here is 
at the point of 16, when you're living under your parents' roof, especially parents who are trying to do the best for you, they've been able to control your life up until that point. She's right on that cusp there where she's trying to push back against it. Now, we all know, as kind of nerdy people, you kind of know the things that she's trying to do, go to a convention, dress up in cosplay, that kind of stuff's not going to be the dangerous things your parents are worried about. But No, but it's strange sh- and different at the same time. Exactly, so. exactly. And she definitely shouldn't have said, it. it's not like I'm trying to ask to go to a party and take cocaine. That cocaine, was, that was their the faces. thing to say to your parents. <laughs> your parents probably think at that age, you don't even know what that word means. Um, yeah. So, Is that uh, the alternative? Oh, crap. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's talk about her parents. Let's talk about her Abu and her, her Ami, uh, Yusuf and Maniba. Um, will we leave, we'll, I'll leave Maniba for a second because she's really central to this story. But yeah. um, I love Yusuf. I love her father. I think he's a lovely character, really supportive, but still strict in, in his way. He, he will definitely follow Maniba's lead. Um, but I love what he's willing to do for her. He's willing to that was so put on sweet. green paint and, and dress yeah. up as a Hulk just for her. And, and he's really excited to do it as well. Really excited. Yeah, to bring he his was actually excited to the idea of the two of them going. And yeah. I did feel sorry for him. She's right. She did hurt his feelings because mm. he was standing there with green paint on his head and yeah. in a homemade Hulk costume, for Absolutely. God's sake. <laughs> this is for you. Yeah. Like. You could see the tears in his eyes. Um, yeah. Like it's also a moment where. He feels like he can he can share in her in her enjoyment of this for once. He can actually yeah. bring her along as as his daughter. That's how I went to my first comic book convention was my dad bringing me along. So I know it means a lot to your parents to be involved in something. Uh, yeah, like and you, your so. or your first concert, or it's like exactly. you're not quite old enough to just go off with your friends on your own. But mm-hmm. it's like we'll bring it, and you're just like, yeah, I get to go. Exactly, you know? exactly. But she's just on that wrong. Wrong age, I suppose, for that to be. Yeah, uh, to the be in between the awkward. Yeah, where you say the completely wrong thing and your parents' uh, hearts are broken. Um, yeah. Poor yourself. I'd rather not go than go with you nearly, like, you know. Yes. Not that that's what she said, but she said it's me and Bruno's thing. Yeah. Like, it's not for ye, like. Exactly. And that is the choice that Maniba said. Effectively, if, if you're not going with your with your father, you're not going at all, basically. So Yeah. Uh, and then he just said, you're not going. Oh, so it's like, oh, you're the poor man. Yeah. Yeah. But he does seem like a great father, though, at least. So He does. And even he was so sweet with Bruno with Zuzu. He was so delighted with it. Mm-hmm. And then, it, obviously, it's really funny when he's there, like, trying to get it to <laughs> turn on the TV or something. It just wouldn't, nothing. Lights going off. Oh, I have had that moment <laughs> with my with all my Google devices. Why? What language do you think I'm speaking? Because you can't pick up what it is I'm asking you to do. And all I'm asking you to do is turn on the lights. That's it. I'm standing yeah. in the dark, shouting out loud at, <laughs> at a device. I probably just should use the light switch more often, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> right. The other major character for the episode, let's talk about uh, Mediba, um, her mom. I really like this representation of the character. Um, you know, the, the, she's uh, Pakistani born, um, living in New York, um, living in this entire community, uh, you know, speaking to each other about all of their kids and all the family's kids. But she only wants the best for Kamala. That's what she's set up in her life. She has set the boundaries for her. Um, may need to loosen the restraints a little bit with Kamala, but this is where she is with her. She's the one that's trying to push her down a path that will get her the best in life. Um, what do you think, Lucas, of, of Maniba? She's the, the, the matriarch character mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in the series. Like She's the one, even though in the, in the previous time when the the girl better, she talked with them about the, guy, the Comic-Con, the Avenger con and the father, do you trust me? And the father, yeah, the mom, no. Yeah. And the father, uh, <laughs> yeah, like kind of. So she's the one dictating the rules and everything in there. Mm-hmm. But she is the proper representation of the mom that is there to provide and protect everyone. Yeah. Most of it, the, the, the little daughter, like the youngest one. Mm-hmm. So she's a good representation of that at that point, like the family. Yeah, yeah. I think I think so as well. I think I think she's there's there's nothing wrong in the kind of questions she's posing to Kamala, um, particularly no. in that in that final moment with her when when she comes home and you know we get that disappointed look. God, I think I've gotten that from my mom uh, very often around that age time uh, age uh, in my life as well, where it's going. What are you doing? You knew I was going to be disappointed with you, and you still went ahead and did what I told you not to. And you knew the lecture I was going to give you. So you knew how bad this was going to be. And then I actually yeah. thought she was going to be angrier. Mm. 
But I guess it's the whole parenting of I'm just more disappointed. Oh, and yes. That's always worse. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they were a bit like, um, at the same time, they don't know anything was going on with her daughter. Mm-hmm. They swap and go to the thing. I know what you're doing. I know what's going on, but why you did? Yeah, it's, it was it was a, a a flip that didn't catch me that on the time. Like I didn't say why. Why are they doing like? Because they present themselves like they don't know what's going on in the daughter life. Like what's the Avengers? It's a party. Yeah, what's you gonna do? We're gonna meet a boy. There's a the alcohol there. This and that. But then when the daughter does. It's not like a like a rain seller. She was kind of like she's gonna be. Like, Why are you doing this to you? Why are you doing mm-hmm. this to your life? You ruin your life. You ruin just. No, I know what you did. Why you did? You're disappointing me. This and that. Like yeah. It's so a kind of like they kind of know about the daughter. Then out of nowhere, they know everything is going on. It's kind of they don't know what's going on with the daughter. Then they know everything is going on. Like yeah, I, I think I think even if she'd done the most innocent thing like Kamala has explained to her parents she was going to do, even if she had done just that, her parents had drawn the line and said, no, you're not going to be able to do that. And she arrived home at, after 11 o'clock at night. Um, you know, that's yeah. that's massive for parents, especially in but New it York. Is, I mean, Jesus, you know? imagine, imagine, like she was expecting, as according to her original timeline, mm-hmm. she was expecting her father to check on her at about half nine, quarter to ten. Exactly. So this is two hours after that. Yep. That's so if her mum's been sitting there for two hours, I, she got away quite lightly. Mm. Or I mean, the net effect is still pretty devastating. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, I thought I thought they were they were trying to compromise. It's kind of more of a kick that mm-hmm. she still went and just completely ignored them when exactly. she had seen how upset her dad was. Yeah. Maybe they thought after that she would listen. Yeah. So then it really was what are you doing? You need to have a look at yourself. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. And that, that's exactly what, uh, what Beniva says to her. It's, it's, um, I don't recognize this girl that would lie to me, this girl that would dress up the way you have, even though I told you not to, and would come back at this time, um, without caring about my feelings effectively. So, yeah. uh, but interestingly, she does leave her with the question of, do you want to be the kind of person that puts your head up in the cosmos and flies around completely not knowing what's going on in the real world? Or do you want to become a good girl and go down the path we've set up for you? And no, obviously her, the uh, answer is the first one. Absolutely. Her response when her mom leaves the room <laughs> is cosmic. Um, no, it, yes. it, it is. I've got superpowers now. Um, I guess I'm going to have to figure all this out. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think she's going to be going down the path of uh, of the good girl path like her mom is, uh, is asking her to. I thought there was some really funny bits with her mom, though. You know, when she's trying on the sari and she's like... She's not too short. It's too uh-huh. long. Like, and then it was like, oh, you're too short. Yes. When, <laughs> it's like, only when the yeah. neighbor or uh, her aunt says it, excuse me. Once her aunt says it, then her mother agrees. Uh, she's so. like, yeah, no, she's too short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really like that. Really like that. Uh, excellent stuff. That's that. I guess the family, anything else about the family that you want to uh, jump in on before we go on to our final point? I thought, I just thought the way they did, they handled the com- the seamless blending of cultures. It was just really mm-hmm. nice. They didn't really make a big thing of it. Yeah. It's just like, that's just their normal. So we're just watching her normal. So yeah. like even her, her brother's son, they're praying and she's kind of like rolling her eyes at him a little bit. But yeah. um, he said to her, say Bismillah before your driving test. And mm-hmm. she did like, you know, it's like, okay, that is just, that's just her normal. Like it's no big deal. And the Absolutely. bilingual, like that's pretty seamless as well. Yeah. They just, you know, just dropping words in and, they obviously she can speak both, but like they communicate in a mix. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Kind of that kind of that melting pot of New York that you see so often, but so it's so naturally done here. It yeah. feels it feels like you're watching a true family together, uh, just going about their day to day lives. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's a really good point. Yeah, um, really liked how that was how that was all put together. And again, I do like that other element that's hanging over. Um, that's hanging over Kamala's head when she's talking about this to Bruno. Um, she talks about one of the girls in the neighborhood who went off and uh, who was engaged, dropped her engagement and went off backpacking around Europe. And the family talked to her as if she joined a death cult. Um, you know, that's kind of hanging over the, that pressure is hanging over Kamala's head, uh, all the time. Yeah. Even if she wants to go down this nerdy path, it seemed, it seems like it's really weird to her family and that's not the path they want for her. So she could be having people talk behind her back like that as well. Same way that the guy said, this is the bad one. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Like and you saw had the black yeah. sheep like and pointed to her and everyone like, yeah, yeah. she's a bad, bad one. Uh-huh. Tough, tough one. Uh, let's get on to the final uh, big moment for the episode then, the final marvellous moment. Uh, Avenger Con itself. This was kind of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> we, we had different opinions All on right. Avenger Con. Okay, what do you think? I thought it looked really fun. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, it looked like it was all in one small hall. Yeah. But it was packed mm-hmm. and they were going around to the different stands and having fun. Yeah. Lucas thought. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a bit shabby, but right. that's the thing. In comparison to what we see, the Rio Comic Con mm-hmm. and uh, Diego, San Diego ones and everything, it's like, oh, it's massive, it's huge, and this. But that looks like something very. It was Jersey City. Yeah, but that's was like sure. done by themselves. Mm-hmm. They set together, they organized, they created, they produced. So that's why it looks like. The very, proper fountains just did it themselves. Yeah, the, like, yeah, they made yeah. for themselves. Like they don't expect some one big company to say, "Oh, we're gonna do it in here because we have lots of funds." No, we like we coordinate each other. We know each other. Then we're gonna do it, and they did. So it's kind of like yeah. it's a kind of the generation nowadays. Like if they want to do something, they're gonna try to do it. They like. do it exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of got vibes of of the first ever conventions that were out there. Now, not as much as the first ever Star Trek convention, but that took place in the 70s, 10 years after the show had finished, and it was put together by fans, and they got along. A couple of cast members, a couple of people that might they be involved. They managed to get, yeah, you know. yeah. So, yeah. And that's what this feels like. It feels like they have some connections with maybe getting an outfit or something, memorabilia that could be related to the Avengers, but there are no comics or movies or anything like that that they can put on screen like you would at a, at a comic convention. This is effectively loads of people that like the superheroes of the day getting together and showing off how much they like it basically so um i, I kind of liked it it is it is really small you're absolutely right but it's the first one i love how kamala talks about it like that as well it's like yeah this, no this they've the first... been there at the start of history exactly. <laughs> i wasn't really you know when they went in and they didn't have their costumes on mm. so was that because they ended up getting the bus uh yes yes was. that was her plan Sorry, it was because it? they missed the bus and they yes. ended up cycling sorry that's exactly it yes they uh they had to cycle there and uh yeah she lost her car she lost her bike as well so they're only on one bike so <laughs> that's because bruno didn't get to her his at all after working on his for just as long as she was working on hers now he did but it wasn't as good as her fantasy version of the costume her fantasy version was him dressed as tony stark with his goatee beard yeah. and the arc reactor coming out of his chest and he looked like the cool tony uh, and it turns out he went for bruce banner which is just him in the purple shirt and the medical coat basically that's what the imagination like that's what i'm aiming to, to be because even her costume was more like the movie captain marvin movie thing but the real one was like the pad thing on the shoulders, the, the leather jack painted, like it was completely different. Yeah. I thought her costume was quite nice and her mother's yeah. wrong, it wasn't that tight. It wasn't, but did you notice <laughs> that she does have a little moment where that she, she looks at her midriff section, he looks at, at, at herself in the mirror from behind and then yeah, tries to put and ties her, the sash. The, the yeah. sash, and that's actually connected to comic book uh, Captain Marvel. She always wears that sash around her uh, around her waist in the comic books. So, oh, nice. uh, so that's mm. a nice little touch. Actually, little touch. Uh, Zoe, the kind of kind of sort of bully character. We only see her yeah. a few times in the episode. But you laughed at the Arabic necklace. I was like, that's so weird. Why are you laughing? Yes, absolutely. That was really odd, wasn't it? But she is in cosplay at this convention. Um, Kamala calls her out. But she's wearing the comic book version of, uh, of the Miss Marvel costume. That's why... Bruno goes, no, that was that's funny. not even accurate. Uh, that's not even yeah. accurate. It's not yeah. real Avengers costume, but it is a comic book costume, which I thought was interesting. And that was tight. That's yeah, exactly what she said. Like, like, I thought people would, uh, people's head would turn when they saw my costume, but here's Kamala with her superpowers <laughs> making yeah, everybody's yeah. head turn. Uh, what did you think of the powers? Now, we don't know much about them. First introduction of them, but it felt a little bit like she was creating hard light um, yeah, that's kind of actually, what I and it was interfering with the electrics, obviously. Mm-hmm. But first, it looked like something was shooting. Mm-hmm. Yes, but then you realize it's not actually that. It does seem to be, like you said, solid light. Yeah, yeah. But when she when she did the elastic man hand mm-hmm. <laughs> to stop Zoe hitting the ground as hard. Then you're, I was like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's not what it is. Yeah, it's like as if she can use her mind to create whatever she wants to create out of it because she did that thing where she boosted herself up when she yeah. couldn't climb up on the 
kind of up on her house towards the end of the episode. Um, there is a little touch there, the hand that she, that she grows to catch, to catch Zoe when Zoe's falling. Uh, that is her power in the comic books. That's being able to make her, uh, her limbs big and grow so that she can, uh, expand and, and catch things effectively. There's, there's some of that. So that is a limb that grows. That's what she's done. So that is definitely the comic book version of it, but very different origin from the comic books. I'm not going to get too nerdy on this, but a uh, very different comic book origin. Um, the reason for that, if you do want to know, is that in the comic book, she's an inhuman, which is a, a, a character created by this Terrigen Mist, there we go, uh, which we saw in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which we saw in The Inhumans, but The Inhumans' characters are kind of gone from the MCU, so they couldn't really do that uh, in the in the TV show. So they've created this idea of her having this this power coming from the bangle of her of her nana. Definitely a story we'll, uh, we'll have to see in the future. How did her nana get, hand, get her hands on this bangle? Uh, yeah, that's, that's I didn't know whether about. to bring that up under family. Mm. But you know, her mum mentioned, like, I've seen what happens when people get, like, too lost in their fantasy world mm-hmm. like, what is she talking about nanny is she talking about her with the bangle yes or and i wonder whether she was talking about herself because kamala says oh there's just gonna be another story about nanny okay and i wonder whether her mom was kind of going oh you're not even gonna get, let me talk you're not even gonna let me say this is a story about me getting lost in my own fantasies and growing up the way i have now which is what i want for you i don't know i i, I certainly think we'll need to find the origin of that that bangle in the future. There's certainly Mm -hmm. something, because how do you get possession of something like that? (laughs) Yeah, and she was just like, no, no, that's junk, kind of trying to just get her to put it away, and she tells Amr to put it up in the attic straight away. Yeah, exactly. I was like, does she know? Does she know what she can do? Looks like she knows. Okay, I didn't realise that. Yeah, it might be. That's why she was trying to highlight, not that, like, because she saw that she was kind of figuring out, like, how to put it. How do you open it, yeah. Yeah. She said, nope. Get this straight away from here. Like, no one touched this thing in the attic. No exactly. one see it. No Forget one touched it. Forget all about it. It's just mm-hmm. Nanny getting rid of her useless crap. Uh, that, yeah. You know, she likes to clear out she her house. She sends us this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, anything else on AvengerCon? Anything else that you want to talk about there? I kind of uh, saw why they left the gloves behind. Mm-hmm. Because if they're going to do the the power and the hand and that glove w- would interfere too much. Of course, yes. And digital effects, speaking like. Well, yeah, yeah. Because everything was on top of the... the first of it, when she it put it... On her skin, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. First of it, everything. When she put the thing, she kind of would see uh, something like energy shield going along her. Then she her see own. herself in another dimension that could be the Captain Marvel dimension. And I don't know if that's we saw on there. It's a bit of crease. Mm. Yes, that's interesting. Yeah, I was wondering what was going on. Uh, yeah, because I know that the the, the real Captain Marvel when he was created with psychonic uh, powers on the Crees and uh, mm-hmm. inheriting the 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 knowledge of them to deal with that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if they are mixing a bit of that because they saw some creatures like does, does that Crees in there in the background when they're showing mm-hmm. was that any other creature that knows about that power or have a- had access to that yeah it's because like, ima- imagine that being like an uh, alien artifact mm-hmm. and if it was say okay so someone in her fa- family met a Cree in the past while they were on earth yes absolutely. when that happened and they took that thing from the guy or they helped the Cree and the Cree left left them to them mm-hmm. oh, so I it's like a kind that. of like raise a lot of the questions like of, yeah about it like yeah, no, I like that. I like that. And and we know uh, the crew were in the Captain Marvel movie, so they, they have been on Earth for decades as well, and they've been around for decades as well. That's that's really cool. I like that, Lucas. Excellent stuff. Uh, any other notes or points about the episode before we uh, before we close out our discussion about the ep- about episode one of Miss Marvel? It was quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did go very quick. It did. Because yeah. I had take, started taking notes, and I was just slipped over. I was like, oh, it's finished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fun of doing a six episode series because the episodes are pretty short in comparison to the kind of movies we've talked about before as well so um but a, but a, an interesting introduction i suppose i'm going to just quickly talk about the post credit scene because there's a little connection in there in case anybody might have missed it there's a post credit scene uh where we see that there are members of damage control this government agency watching the footage from avengers con um the reason why it's in why it's most interesting i suppose is because there's two agents that are there uh, agent cleary and agent deaver uh, agent cleary we last saw in uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. He's the person who arrested Peter Parker and all of his friends in Spider-Man No Way Home um, as damage control. So uh, I love that they brought this character into 
the MCU again. I love seeing these characters repeating in other series and other shows. That's what makes the Marvel Universe so much more interesting than all of these standalone uh, superhero shows that are out there. So uh, I thought that was kind of cool. And I still nod that there's a wider world out there, someone uh, investigating possible superhero sightings. Um, that's that's kind of new, uh, but but nice to tie in. A chance to create a teenage version of the Avengers. Exactly. Captain Miss Marvel. Then you connect to Spider Man. They're all kind of a similar age mm-hmm. and time, like and stuff. Like so. Yes, we've been. Could be the creation been, of that, like some yeah. pa- parallel thing going on. Like absolutely, we've been seeing some of the young Avengers appear in some of the other shows. I know you haven't seen all the other shows, um, guys, as well, but there have been other members of the young Avengers appearing dotted around in in all the other shows so uh, entirely possible in about four or five years we'll see a young avengers appearing as well so that's kind of cool one other shout out for me i did like that they had uh ryan penagos uh from marvel as the compare on the show he's been the social media manager for marvel for years and is at pretty much every comic-con event he's the one that does all the presenting at the big comic cons San Diego comic con new york comic con uh all of that stuff he's been around for years so really cool to that they gave him just this little role as the as the compare at this event i thought that was quite fun i thought it was really nice as well just um but before the post credit scene mm-hmm. that the song that was playing the eva b the pakistani rapper mm-hmm. was it's really well authentic, for authenticity Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah something that, that that they did throughout um, all the episodes of Moon Knight as well. The uh, the all the music yeah. that was in there was all yeah. was all Egyptian as well. So uh, I love that. There's some great needle drops in this first episode as well. Uh, I I do think the opening. I know some people are probably quite bored of uh, of no, the weekend actually, song. Yeah, we but, uh, we actually said that. Oh, yeah. nice the weekend. Like- exactly, and and you know, considering her powers in the show are light based and the song is blinded by the light, I thought. That was a nice little connection to uh, uh, for for them to use that. Uh, yeah, kind of cool, kind of cool. And it made it feel like you know young and fun. Upbeat and fun, yeah. exactly, exactly. Good stuff, Irene. You haven't done this in about four years. Um, if, no. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> if, if our fellow developers uh, have been with us since the time we were covering uh, Netflix. Um, we have always done a whether you defend the episode or not at the end of the episode. So I'll throw it to you, Irene. It's been a while. I think it's been since Jessica Jones season one, uh, since you were here for, for a podcast. Uh, do you defend Miss Marvel episode one, Generation Y? I do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Will you watch more? I will. Excellent. For Excellent. sure. I'm actually really interested to see what happens with the history. If they tell us a lot about the history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And see what the connection is and see where this bracelets and or a bangle has come from. That'd be, that'd yeah. be quite cool. Is what that- about you? Do you defend Mar- Miss Marvel episode one? I definitely defend this. I think this is a nice, different show. And I'm telling you, The Boys is great fun to cover, but it's really intense. And there's a lot of blood going on in that. And I like having this lighter side uh, to watch uh, on a weekly basis as well. So it'll be good to have this um, alternating between this and, and The Boys for a while. It's fun. Really like uh, the the characters in the show. Really, really think they've cast the characters really well. Iman Vellani as, uh, as Kamala Khan is just instantly likable really really good and i like the relationship she has with the family i uh, really like seeing matt lince's bruno as well and they're they're all working together for me for a fun show you know i don't need to see darkness all the time uh, it's nice to have a bit of lightness occasionally so uh, so really enjoyed this how about yourself lucas do you defend this episode of miss marvel i defend uh, the, the the miss marvel mm-hmm. but i have just one worrying about it mm-hmm. i got worried about the same way they deal, dealt with uh moon knight Mm-hmm. Sometimes they rush too much things. Sometimes they everything just was changed just to fit on the narrative of the character. Right. So I'm just afraid that they push too much Miss Marvel to start doing like this, like the same way they they show Bruno in a way like Tom do a genius in this and just mm-hmm. leave a hint on the tech channel company there. Yeah. I think I'm just afraid that they do too much, and they felt the family was a bit uh, comedy, mm-hmm. like type, like family. I don't know. It could be just the light way they 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 dealt with the thing, but they felt it was a bit like comedy, like the same way Big Bang Theory with uh, Raj Kutapal Kutapal and his family. Right. They kind of like presented in the same way, but this family was more happy and lighted and everything, mm-hmm. but just. I don't know. Yeah, it could be imagined too much, but I don't know. Like, right. I just got afraid a bit of that. Like, 
All right. Well, we'll we'll see what uh, see how the rest of the show plays out and see how they uh, how they deal with it um, for the rest of the episodes. Excellent stuff. Thanks so much. Uh, for joining me for this discussion and, and stepping into the shoes of uh, of Chris and John. They're easy shoes to fill, aren't they? Well, I'm sure they'll listen to it and tell you different. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. A couple other pieces of business for our podcast. We're going to go over to the slushy bar for our first pub quiz question. Can't be a pub quiz because Kamala is only 16. So we're going to go to a slushy bar instead. <laughs> the first question for this episode is, what is the name of Kamala Khan's blog production company? There will be a question at the end of each episode uh, of our coverage of Miss Marvel on Disney Plus. Uh, put together all six answers to the questions and you could get your hands on some Miss Marvel goodies at the end of the season. Uh, you just need to email us in the answers to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. And the question just one more time. What is the name of Kamala Khan's blog production company? This episode of TV Podcast Industries is brought to you by our supporters over on Patreon, including Claire Payne. Thanks so much, Claire. Uh, I know Claire's been supporting us right back from when we opened up our Patreon. So uh, thank you so much uh, for sticking with us all these years, Claire. You could support us for a monthly event uh, over on patreon.com slash TV Podcast Industries. And if you'd like to support us with a one-off event, you can donate to us at buymeacoffee.com slash TVPI to give me some coffee to uh, handle all the editing that I have to do uh, on our podcasts. And fellow defenders, we'd love to hear your thoughts about Miss Marvel. As I said, you can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com uh, just like Jerry did Jerry sent in an email to us he says hey guys this was an okay start Kamala is like she is in the comics except her, her power origin uh, I know you can't do the terror mist in human origin so are they doing mystical powers or cosmic powers are the bracelets Negaband or something made by the Eternals? The animation in the background throughout the show was very Scott Pilgrim. This show is differently targeted for a young adult audience, but I'm very interested in seeing where it's going, Jerry, in Niceville. Interesting. Ooh, is it is it Alien and Origin, exactly as you were saying, Lu Lucas, the, uh, the, the band? Um, are they mystical powers or cosmic powers? I'm guessing cosmic, because you're going to connect her into Miss Marvel. She's a huge fan of Miss Marvel. So, and she is going to appear in the next, uh, the next Captain Marvel movie. So, uh, so there's definitely going to be some connection, I think, between, between those, those things. But, um, not to give spoilers for Shang-Chi, um, the more recent Marvel movie, but there is an origin of his. Ten Rings of Power as yeah. well, that is connected to space. Uh, so wonder if the two are connected. That could be interesting. He's right about the Sp Scott Pilgrim. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, that's what it is. Yeah, that's go. what it reminds me of. There you go. Yeah. like it. Excellent. Thanks so much, Jerry, for that. We also got an email in from Coffee and Vodka who says, Greetings, fellow Kishi defenders. What if John Hughes directed a superhero series? This was really good. Made for not just fans of the characters, but anyone who doesn't consider their teenage years the good old days. Love the use of animation throughout, as well as her fight to hold on to her imagination in suffocating surroundings. In a single episode, they managed to show Kamala's character, present her goals, her opposition, damage control, and flesh out her environment in depth. This leaves the rest of the series to the plot rather than backfilling. Outside of the story of her mysterious grandmother, blessed efficiency, and Easter eggs to boot... Wonder how the Ten Rings connect to the bracelet, other than them both being bracelets. Also, wasn't that Colossus's arm in the Marvel title crawl an amazing first installment? Five horrible hulks out of five. Peace and take care. Coffee and vodka. Ooh, interesting. Firstly, I did not notice Colossus's arm in the Marvel title crawl. Um, I was too busy noticing that Moon Knight is now in there because he was the most recent series. He's now in that yeah. little Marvel section, but I didn't see Colossus's arm in no, there. No, I didn't. Really I would unusual. be looking again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I like, I like being able to go back uh, and look and look at the episodes and things that other people point out. That's really cool. Glad you enjoyed a coffee and vodka uh, and welcome aboard for, for this season. Uh, Irene, I think we're going over to Facebook. Uh, our Facebook group is facebook.com slash group slash TV podcast industries. And we have our spoiler posts up there and that's where these uh, comments are from. We got Michael Walling um, commenting. He said, I thought it was good. A pretty by the numbers plot, but that's not always a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Did you catch the rent a bro truck during the end credits? Oh, how am I missing these? Again, I didn't either. Yeah. I didn't see that. The rent a bros uh, are the, the uh, antagonists, some of the antagonists, at least from uh, the Hawkeye series. I did not notice. And I actually watched those end credits a couple of times um, just to kind of pick up all the notes I normally pick yeah. up. <laughs> so interesting that people are catching so much that I'm not catching. Another thing to go back and look. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. 
Thanks, Michael. We also have some feedback for another Michael. Michael Booth also says, does the fact that you're getting comments for episode one mean you guys didn't get pre-access to the episodes for uh, for Miss Marvel? I thought this episode was fun, plot-wise, nothing special, but that's okay. It's clearly targeted at a different audience to Moon Knight or Falcon the Winter Soldier. I think I'll share this one with the kids. A lot of fun moments here, and I'm digging the animations in the background. I really liked how they did the text conversation using parts of the background. I want to call out poor Hulk dad. He nailed the disappointment and her dad look. That was brutal. Nice little demonstration of Kamala's powers right at the end there. Uh, Let's see if she can avoid the attention of whatever shadowy agency is looking for. I assume someone with more knowledge than me recognized the badge in that guy's belt. Uh, The coffee mugs and a few other things have DODC on them. Department of Damage Control, maybe? Looking forward to seeing what next week brings from Michael. Thanks, Michael. Um... Yeah, I'm not that smart. I just literally knew the actor and knew that he was in No Way Home. I didn't see any of the stuff around the room saying Department of Damage Control on them. That is literally, uh, that's excellent. I love I love when people catch all these little things. Great stuff. Uh, yes, we didn't get the episode in advance. Uh, the reason why I need to say that is because we'll be recording our podcast after the episodes come out. So anybody who wants to send feedback can send that in to us uh, after you watch the episode. Thanks so much, Michael. Our final piece of feedback comes in from Penny Lennox, who says, I am so in love. The aesthetics of this show, with all the animation and whimsy, is reminiscent of one of my favourite movies from the 80s, Better Off Dead, but with a modern flair. Kamala is perfectly cast. Also, I was so happy to see Matt Lint's head still attached as the BFF. The family scenes were so real and the characters are so fully realised that it grounds the whimsy and gives Kamala a lot of backstory without having to spell it out. Oh, I like that, Penny. Lucas is looking at me going, I told you, because he, he when we were finished watching it, he kept going, it was so 80s. And I was going, I don't know why you're saying that. But apparently he wasn't the only one who got that vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's two of our pieces of feedback as well. Uh, one saying John yeah. Hughes movies like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Breakfast Club, that kind of stuff. And Better Off Dead, the wonderful John Cusack movie uh, from the 80s as well. Excellent stuff. Yes. So it's so a nice 80s vibe. They did the best high school comedies back then though didn't they i probably lucas has probably seen more of them than i have (laughs) there you go that's your mission for this weekend lucas get the uh get the top 10 uh high school comedies yeah when you're working i can watch them (laughs) perfect once again irene and lucas thanks so much for joining me for uh for the discussions for miss marvel thank you for the invitation yeah thank you very much for that open you know you know the uh, you know the code for the zoom room all you need to do is just go on when i'm online and you can join me for any of the podcasts that we're doing record for you. <laughs> <laughs> not at all hope you all enjoyed that fellow defenders uh, hopefully we'll have you back uh, at some point in the future as well we will be back with our miss marvel podcast next week for episode two of the series uh, as i mentioned we are covering the boys season three it's a very different show if you haven't watched it um or if Miss Marvel's more of your speed. It might not be for you, but if it is for you, make sure you check it out on TV Podcast Industries. Thanks so much for joining us. Talk to you again next time. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.